Today, I'm going to delve into the critical situation currently facing banks, not only in China, but also in the United States. This financial turmoil has the potential to trigger devastating margin calls and initiate a severe market squeeze. Hey, welcome to AMC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember this is not a financial advice video. Recently, Sina tweeted about the collapse of Jiangxi Bank of China, highlighting that China's banking sector is in a full-scale crisis. In just one week, 40 banks have disappeared, absorbed into larger institutions. This situation underscores the struggles of smaller banks in China, which are dealing with bad loans and are heavily exposed to the ongoing property crisis. Interestingly, this scenario mirrors the situation in the U.S., where banks are also grappling with bad loans. In fact, bad debts in us banks are currently five times larger than they were back in 2008. Moreover, the U.S. is experiencing a commercial real estate crisis that is wreaking havoc on the market. Sina's report further states that approximately 3 to 800 troubled institutions, which account for about 13% of the total banking system, exist in recent years. Some of these banks have revealed that up to 40% of their books are comprised of non-performing loans. For example, the Bank of Zhujiang, a mid-tier lender, recently disclosed that its profits might plummet by 30% due to poorly performing loans. As us lenders prepare to reveal earnings, a significant drop in profits is expected, reflecting the severity of the situation. The authorities have been pushing for greater transparency, similar to efforts in the U.S., but the true extent of the bad debt problem is still unfolding. Just Dario pointed out that it's becoming increasingly difficult for majorist banks to hide their losses until maturity. According to PIC, us bank profits are under pressure from lower interest payments and higher credit losses. Some of the largest S banks are likely to report weaker profits for the second quarter as they earn less from interest payments and set aside more funds to cover deteriorating loans. This trend suggests that us banks, much like their Chinese counterparts, are facing significant financial challenges. An article predicts that as banks kick off earnings season, provisions could rise for potential losses on commercial and industrial loans. These loans pose a greater risk to major banks in 2024 than they did in 2023. Analysts suggest that banks like J.P. Morgan and Bank of America could report over 10% declines in earnings. Furthermore, 741 Trey tweeted about how the ISD CEO has reminded us that global banks are holding us treasuries as collateral. The ISD CEO called for a permanent exclusion of us treasury securities from total leverage exposure arguing that this would provide banks with more capacity to participate in us treasury markets and facilitate access to cleared markets, especially during periods of stress. This situation indicates that many banks are currently overleveraged and cannot add to their positions without risking margin requirements. This overleveraging puts banks on the brink of survival. Disproportionate increases in capital or risk could force banks to retreat from certain trading and intermediary businesses. This scenario suggests that if banks have to take on any more risk, they may not survive and would have to withdraw from trading activities. Boss Blunts further explained that banks no longer have sufficient capital to continue buying us treasuries. In fact, they are holding treasuries hostage, with the reverse repo program hitting highs of $2.55 trillion in money market funds, which have now collapsed to just $500 billion. These banks lack the funds to keep buying us treasuries, and other countries are not interested in taking them on. Consequently, banks are demanding the exemption of exposure to us treasuries from their leveraged calculations, insisting that this exclusion become permanent. The Federal Reserve and the Treasury may have no choice but to comply to avoid a default on us government debt, as there is no one else willing or able to continue purchasing these treasuries. This creates a vicious cycle where the Fed and the government generate more debt that banks buy up, leading to even more debt creation. To enable banks to buy unlimited amounts of treasuries, they must exclude these treasuries from leverage calculations, allowing banks to become even more heavily leveraged. This precarious situation could collapse if just one element fails. Practical Stocks posted a screenshot suggesting that this fragile system could be tipped over by something like GameStop. Since May, GameStop has been forming a bullish flag pattern, 
which could trigger a significant rise when it surpasses $26 and then $36. This could align with another tweet from Roaring Kitty, pushing GameStop to new recent highs. When GameStop breaks out of this pattern, AMC might follow suit. Peter Han tweeted that while he understood the rationale behind shorting AMC in 2020, he finds it unfathomable for anyone to initiate new short positions in 2024 when AMC is becoming profitable and setting new records. He believes the only shorts left are those resetting an existing total return swap, questioning why they wouldn't just close out of short positions given AMC's upward trajectory. Despite claims from some that all shorts have already closed their positions in AMC, practical stocks data shows otherwise. Short interest remains near all-time highs at 55 million shares shorted, up from 51.1 million shares a month ago. This indicates that an additional 4 million shares have been shorted in just one month. Lastly, Meta News tweeted that South Korean regulators are now investigating the MMTLP issue. While the second U.S. tried to disregard any wrongdoing despite substantial evidence, South Korea's Financial Supervisory Service has begun its investigation, with preliminary findings expected by July 23rd. This investigation could uncover significant details about the MMTLP issue, given South Korea's stance against synthetic shorting, unlike the SEC, which has been perceived as supportive of illegal shorting practices in the U.S. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about a MC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.